Welcome to Dominations, my name is Mark and today we'll take a closer look to the shipyard. A little issue sidewise. If you like the video and the content I'm showing to you, it would be really nice and I would appreciate if you would hit the subscribe button and probably turn on the notification bell to stay tuned for all future videos. Let's start with the structure of the video. The first aspect will be what actually is the dock? And I mean it's two functions. Secondary, what is an expedition? Defining an expedition. Third, what dock levels or which dock levels are connected to which ages? Fourth, general information about the shipyard or the dock. Fifth, which research is there for the dock to make it more sufficient and efficient to use the dock as well as an additional uh, useful tip. Six, the senseful use or usage of the dog and last but not least seventh point troop tactics from the dog and how I personally value them as senseful or not senseful and how to use them to be senseful. So let's come to the first aspect what actually is the dog? The dog is a building and it's a building we can not uh, dislocate or locate in another position so like the museum the alliance gate and uh, the embassy, it is fixed in its location and it's there from the really beginning of the game. We don't have to build it, we simply can upgrade it. It uh, And it has two main functions or two functions in total. First, the leak boat bonus, so which is depending on your actually and current leak and gives you some resource uh, benefits all 24 hours. This is the very old function which is it had for all the time dominations exists now. And then secondary, I think approximately one year ago it was implemented, the exploration or the expedition function. This is directly getting us to the question what actually is an expedition? So we have some resources in game we can use. One resource in general is time. Another resource are our citizens and at least we have some physical resources such as gold, oil and food. Now like in most upgrades and researches, our resources will be um, used to get all of them done. It's exactly the same in our shipyard with our expeditions. We will have to use some time as well as our citizens as resource to spend them for a, a specific purpose and don't have them available for a specific amount of time before they will return. So you could also define an expedition as a limited amount of time in which citizens stay unavailable, providing you with a specific reward or rewards when uh, returning afterwards again. So let's come to the next chapter, uh, the dock levels and the regarded or related ages. First on, I'm here on uh, Domination's Wikia page, so Domination's Wikipedia online. I can really recommend it to you, but I think most players, most obviously, uh, are already aware of this site. If you are not, you will find approximately all detailed or important information about the game, its ages, all content inside on this uh, Wik Wikipedia site. And um, yeah, it's being hosted or administered by uh, some players, so not by big huge games. Therefore, probably some information are not 100% correct. And yeah, but nevertheless, it's a good site. And uh, let's start with the related ages. First on, we have the dock being built as stage one dock and being available in the Bronze Age. Then we have stage two for the Iron Age, stage three classical, four medieval, five gunpowder, six enlightenment, seven industrial, eight global. Like you can read nine atomic, 10 cold war, and then at least level 11 dock or shipyard for space as well as digital age. Let's come to the next chapter, the general information about the dock. First on, the rewards you can get from the dock obviously are crowns, trade goods, national trade goods, blessings, uh, ordinary resources, as well as museum materials such as benefactors, uh, researchers, I think they are called, and uh, supply goods. The quality or level and amount of uh, 
Rewards you can get from the expedition dock obviously is depending on the level of the dock, so how far you have upgraded. Over here, currently we are in a level one dock, which is still in Iron Age. And you can also see that only one out of three expeditions is unlocked so far. So the higher your dock gets, uh, also the expedition um, targets are changing. You are getting new expedition targets and they will successively um, substitute older targets. Ah, yeah, what I've probably uh, forgotten about is, is one of a uh, very, very important information about the dock. Uh, one of the rewards also could be the troop tactics. I'm not sure whether I have mentioned it before. I've already mentioned at level one dock only one expedition is possible. If you are increasing it and getting to level four shipyard or dock, which I will call it shipyard from now on, level four shipyard, which would be equal to medieval stage, you are unlocking the second, you can see down here. And if you are getting to level seven shipyard, which would be industrial age level, you are unlocking the last uh, space or the last place for having all time three expeditions uh, available. What is pretty important about the dock is a specific amount of citizens, like we've already learned, is blocked and unavailable if you have sent them to an expedition. Unfortunately, other than in researches and upgrades, we are not able to get them back. So if I'm hitting send to, expedi uh, to citizens, we are only able to um, speed it up with some speed ups or with crones, but we are not able to get those citizens back by canceling an expedition. We have also the opportunity to additionally, but not necessarily, put a general into the expedition and send it together with our um, citizens at the expedition, sending generals. If you have added some generals additionally to your expedition, they will bring back some random bonus, which you cannot uh, foresee previously. So it could be some really lame resources, uh, such as gold and food, but probably you will get some diamonds or even additional museum uh, material. Let's come to the next chapter uh, regarding research for more efficient use. So first on we have the library and in our library we have stage nine, which is equal to our global age. And there we have uh, the shipping book. And besides this, within the shipping book, um, we have chapter one plus 10% expedition resource rewards. It's okay. Chapter two plus one expedition trade good rewards. Also in all, uh, okay. Chapter 3, Expeditions Return 10% Faster, and that's pretty nice. Chapter 4, Plus 10% uh, General Bonus Resource Rewards, also okay. And at least Chapter 5, Expeditions Require One Less Citizen, the second very important chapter. Due to this, uh, the amount of needed citizens is decreasing at the biggest expeditions with four uh, citizens needed to three, with those middle ones from three to two, and from those little ones from two to one. So in total, um, yeah. But that's uh, quite not the only research we are able to conduct for our um, for our expeditions. We also have the opportunity to research, oh no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong, at Harriet Tubman. So at Harriet Tubman, if we have upgraded our uh, university to stage five, which is again equally to global age, the um, expedition return faster. Here we have the opportunity to research 10 times minus 1% expedition time, which means we can gain additional 10%, so in sum, minus 20% time for expeditions to return. Now, if we are talking about expeditions to return, here I have um, a sideways and tip for you, which is, in my opinion, very well valuable and many players are not thinking quite about. I will change the account to show it to you because in my account, in my first account, uh, all expeditions still are running and so it's not visible. So now, if we are looking closer to our expeditions, we always see that if an expedition has finished and is getting replaced by a new one, we have in the right top corner and date of expiring. So it expires always after having or being available 
after 24 hours so only one day and if you have accepted and used this expedition it will automatically refresh otherwise we would have to use crowns to refresh it now a lot of resource uh, expeditions actually uh, especially if you have done some research to shorten them up um, are below 24 hours so if you are now having an expedition let's say like i have over here with benefactors and one troop tactic uh, desert rebel army and i'm it's not favorable for me so i don't like it yes the most intuitive and obvious way would to say just skip it and don't use it but if it has expired for about uh, or the last expedition has been conducted and now you have an expiring date which is for example 24 hours in the future but conducting this expedition would cost you about 21 hours and 36 minutes it would be smart to conduct this expedition despite of the fact that you are not using any of its rewards but to fasten it up without any crowns so what i mean is if the expedition would automatically refresh within 24 hours you would have to wait 24 hours to get something which is probably what you need but if you conduct this expedition despite of the fact whether you need it or not with 21 hours and 36 minutes only as an example it would be way faster without using crowns to get rid of that um, of the unfavorable expedition and its rewards and get the possibility to get one with favorable rewards i hope it was understandable so at least let's come to the pre last chapter which is the sensible use of the uh, shipyard so i have to claim over here a sensible use always has some kind of subjective manner so when you are really demanding or needing for resources obviously you will tell me resources are your primary focus um, other ones are probably focusing for troop tactics what i have what i am mentioning over here is only my personal view on the situation and what what i value the most uh, as rewards from the shipyard so probably you are uh, you are uh, thinking the same probably you having some other thoughts this has no uh, general objectivity behind in my opinion the very primary use or sensible use of the expeditions is to require museum materials such as researchers supply goods and uh, benefactors yeah, they are called benefactors. I don't think I have to uh, explain why the museum is very important, uh, especially in the late game, but it is important for all players. If you are interested why the museum is important and how to uh, get master of the universe, easy universe, <laughs> master of the museum, just check out my museum guide. But at this point, we won't talk more in detail about the museum. We are talking about the shipyard. If we are looking very closely to the rewards which are available for us in the shipyard, we will recognize that benefactors and researchers come in a lot huger amount than supply goods actually are. Sometimes they are matching up, but nevertheless, even if they are matching up, supply goods are far more scarce than other resources due to the fact that we need a much huger amount of them so let's make an example if we have an artifact and it is basically level one so one star artifact and we want to upgrade it to two star we will need 400 uh, supply goods upgrading it from uh, two star to three star will need additional 600 supply good upgrading it to four star additional 800 supply good plus 175 researchers and five star 1000 additional supply goods and 200 benefactors so in total if we want to upgrade an artifact from one to five star we will need 2800 supply goods only 175 benefactor uh, researchers and 200 benefactors that's a multiplicator of 10 up to 14 times depending on whether you have a two star three star or one star artifact and want to upgrade it full so it's pretty obvious i think that supply goods are much more limiting than the uh, sub, uh, researchers or the benefactors nevertheless we are getting from uh, the dock or the shipyard nearly equally amount or nearly equal amount of supply uh, goods researchers and benefactors 
Nevertheless, do not hesitate to go for expeditions which are giving you researchers or benefactors even if you already have a really lot amount. If you have conducted some purchases in the game, you will get some VIP stages. And if you have some VIP stages, you can go to the VIP shop and pretty, pretty often in the VIP shop on regularly basis, you will be up, uh, able to exchange those nasty and too much uh, benefactors and researchers for supply goods. I mean, uh, converting 100 of re uh, researchers or benefactors against 50 supply goods isn't good at all, but nevertheless, it is better than having 7,000, like I had previously, benefactors and 6,000 researchers just laying around, unable to use them, whereby you have too little amount of supply goods uh, to upgrade your artifacts to stage 2 or st uh, uh, to start st stage st 2 or start stage uh, 3. So let's come to the secondary or second most important use or most sensible use from the shipyard. And this is obviously the uh, gaining of troop tactics. So if you are gaining some troop tactics, we will talk later on in detail about uh, which troop tactics are sensible for what purpose. But nevertheless, some troop tactics are um, especially worthful for you if you are attacking in a specific style. So for example, those uh, two times zero uh, um, kamikaze airplanes you can get by some expeditions. Most logically, it is depending on how you are attacking. But for example, if you are attacking with bombers, bombers and heavy tanks, bombers and bazookas, bombers and commandos, that uh, doesn't matter, it's only an example. If you are attacking with bombers, uh, there are shooting buildings which are dangerous to your bombers, but also SAM batteries, so air defense traps, and uh, you can get rid of those with the scan tactic, but most obviously you cannot get rid of all of them. Therefore, it's pretty easy to use um, your Kamikaze Zero troop tactics, which you are getting completely free and on pretty often basis from the shipyard as some kind of bait. Send them forward, getting them shot by the sand batteries, which are then triggered and your uh, bombers are not getting harmed by uh, the enemy sand batteries, like we can see in the um, example video in the background. Yeah, actually that was not a good example. I mean, the sand battery was triggered by the bomber and not by the uh, by the zero plane, but I think you know what I wanted to show you. Let's come to the last aspect uh, or chapter of the video, which are the troop tactics. Unfortunately, when I have running my record program in the very right top corner, there is uh, some kind of uh, icon of the recording program and if I am hitting it I am w unwillingly stopping and resuming the uh, record program but to open and close different tabs in my browser I have to tap the right top corner uh, therefore I have to film it just simply uh, from uh, my iPad yeah and here we have all troop tactics which are so far as I know available from the dock so far. First we have the horse raider army. Obviously these are so only some uh, raiders. The raiders are only good for taking out economic buildings. So I can recommend using them if you want to get 50% quick victory and the enemy has exposed economic buildings which because they are pretty fast in taking out economic buildings. Otherwise you can also use them to uh, clear the enemy base simply uh, if there are only some economic buildings remaining and you take the raiders uh, yeah, to get them, get rid of them. Next we have the Egyptian army which uh, is set at only by infantrists and bowmen, so uh, sh shooters. Uh, obviously they are not pretty useful in most situations. I can only recommend them by uh, for clearing the enemy base in the very end. Next we have the companion army which is only one horseman, in my opinion totally useless, 
uh, the only way you can use it in a sensible way is if you have um, a main army which is consisting out of, I don't know, ballistas and shooters and you are taking one of those companion uh, troop tactics sideways if there is a mortar or a stronghold and just to decept it or to take the attraction, distract it and uh, prohibit or avoid this building shooting at your main forces. Next we have the Trojan army, it's exactly the same like previously, we have archers and infantries. Only recommended use is cleaning up the enemy base if there are no uh, defense buildings remaining. Next we have the uh, Libyan army, also consisting out of shooters and uh, raiders, so recommended use. Take it for 50% victory if, you, if the enemy has economic buildings uh, pretty exposed, or take it to clear the enemy base. Legionary army, we have two wall sappers and six infantries, uh, Roman infantries. Uh, they are not very durable against uh, enemy defense buildings, so also recommendation use them for cleaning up, like most of the other crappy troop tactics. Hellenic army, uh, one horseman, four infantries, again distracting mortars uh, or strongholds for not shooting at your main army, or probably use those infantrymen, which are... Uh, in this troop tactic for cleaning enemy base at the end. The Punic troop tactic, uh, one, uh, one horseman in form of an elephant and four spearmen, uh, again only recommendable for distracting mortars or uh, strongholds. Merchant convoy army, four German infantry as well as one healing convoy. They are only useful for getting down enemy economy buildings without any enemy defenders to uh, defend themselves. So also probably in the very end. Yuan Dynasty army, as mentioned before, two raiders, six Chukonus, so shooters. Uh, use them for 50% quick victory if economic buildings are exposed. Or probably you can also use them to uh, support your main troops, but I don't know whether this is a successful approach. Here we have the African Elephant Army with even one Elephant Archer in it. Unfortunately, Elephant Archers got nerfed um, passively by all other buildings getting more hit points, but Elephant Archers are not uh, gotten, did not get stronger, therefore they got in, uh, passively uh, indirectly weakened. And I would use this army only to uh, support main troops. Greek Fire Thrower Army, and let's be honest, uh, over here it's getting interesting the first time, really. Uh, those Greek fire throwers have uh, huge HP, so they are really durable, and they are also um, dealing a lot of damage in a cone shape, so to a lot of enemies in front of them. Therefore, definitely, here is your recommendation. They are a more valuable troop, which can support your main troops, as well as uh, clear the enemy base, get rid of some defense buildings, get rid of economic buildings uh, or even spend them or donate them in a defensive manner in tr your strongholds because they are nasty to fight against. Conquistador army, we have shooters and one bombard, so pretty useful to uh, support your main troops, just drop them with your main troops and get some additional shooters and range power, but also you can uh, donate them in defensive manner because ranged troops are always uh, nasty to fight due to the fact that if they are donated and staying inside the walls they are for a lot of troops from uh, enemy attackers uh, unattainable so they can deal damage without or while being protected. Pike and Shot Army from Gunpowder Age, same as mentioned before, 7 shooters, 7 infantrymen, use them as support of your main troops, drop them with your main troops or use them in the very end to clear enemy buildings which are exposed. Indian Elephant Army, let's be honest, in my opinion they are pretty worthless, just, I don't know, waste them. Green Standard Army level 4, some shooters, one horseman and one mortar. Uh, Support your main troops with them, or use them to clean up. Uh, Napoleonic Light Army, in my opinion, most sensible to clean up in the very end. Sepoy Army, okay, over here it's getting interesting again, only the second time for all that kind or amount of uh, troop tactics we, troop tactics we have seen already. Uh, Sepoys have a decent boost 
damage against enemy defenders so valuable in offense and you can just support your main troops with them uh, but otherwise you can also donate them defensively and they will deal a lot of damage against enemy attackers british expedition army here again it's getting interesting because you can support your main troops pretty well with them British uh, range troops have one more range and additional damage against enemy defenders. Then you have a machine gun with them, suppressing enemy defenders, and you have a healing card. Definitely recommendation, use them as support for your main troops or def uh, even donate them in defensive manner. Baltimore Fencibles, three wall miners and one howitzer. I would not uh, locate them lonely somewhere because they are dying pretty easily. Use them uh, to clean up the base in the very end or su support your main troops. Probably you can donate them uh, defensively, but the three wall miners are getting completely worse, worthless over there. Desert Rebel Army, mostly uh, raiders and six infantrymen, so good at getting hit points uh, depleted or destructed. Therefore use them for 50% victory if economic buildings are exposed or clean up in the end. Demolition Squad Army, very very sensible in my opinion, especially if you are already playing with commando troops. We have one commando, one bazooka and a flamethrower, so they are effective against enemy tanks, effective against enemy ordinary buildings, effective against enemy defenders and effective against enemy um, defense buildings. So you can just simply use them to clean up, but there are, therefore they are probably too valuable, support your main troops or probably attack from uh, different angles. So have your main troops from one side and support your attack with uh, opening another flank by dropping one or two, probably three of these uh, armies from another flank. Valuable troop tactic, definitely. S-35 tanks, uh, worthless in my opinion, same as those elephants. Use them to distract mortars or simply waste them. NATO army, I'm not a huge fan of it, simply using it to uh, clean the enemy base in the very end due to the mortars, otherwise senseless. Arrow K army, uh, 8 Korean shooters, 1 APC, 1 healing card, same as we told before with the British uh, infantrymen and the healing card. Support your main army if you're playing an ordinary composition with some shooters, you're getting an additional healing card and the APC is spitting out some infantrymen. Uh, using them to clean the enemy base in the very end is also another option. Frontier Forest Army, one howitzer, four Gatling guns and one wall sapper. You can just also use them to uh, support your main army, probably even donate them on defense, or but that could be some kind of waste. Use them to uh, clean the enemy base up. Zero airplane, pretty pretty valuable, especially if you are playing paying focus on your air troops, such as playing with transporters or playing with bombers. Use them as baits. Uh, or decoys, just send them previously in the enemy base, hoping to trigger some sand batteries so that your valuable main forces in the air are not getting uh, harmed by the sand batteries. At least Wall Breacher Army level 9, in level 9, same as mentioned before, only higher level troops, some mortars, some machine guns, and a Wall Breacher. Probably you can support your main forces by them, so, uh, donate them defensively, or simply use them to. Uh, get rid of last enemy buildings while uh, cleaning up. So that's about the dog guide. If you feel informed, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notification bell. See you soon. Domination tips.